am 14. I will be going into my freshman year of high school in the fall. I have hemiplasia on my right side. Mm -hmm. Well, it widely affects my right side. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever people ask ask me, hey, do you have a, like, what's going on? I, um, I either joke with them saying that I got in a car accident (laughs) or, um, or I say I have, I had a stroke in utero. Okay. Um, yeah, what kinds of STEM learning activities did you involve me in when I was little? Right, so, unfortunately, as I thought about that question, I realized that I don't think I involved you in many of them, um, because of my own, um, my own fear of seeing you struggle because of your disability, or my own, um, challenges and frustrations that I felt... Um, not that I was frustrated with you or challenged by you, but the emotions that that caused in me to see my kids struggle with something that they shouldn't have to struggle with uh, because of a disability that occurred kind of, it was, it's always hard for me when you were really little to think of it as, as, as something that there wasn't something I could have done differently and there wasn't something I could have done differently. But it still was hard because you were in my body that was supposed to be the safest place in the whole wide world for you. And that's when this happened. So there were, I had a lot of emotions of my own that I was struggling with there when you were little. Um, and so I, I either didn't put you into STEM learning classes because I thought that you couldn't do it and I didn't want you to be frustrated. Or I thought you couldn't do it and I didn't want to watch you struggle because it hurt. Um, but what did your teachers do for you in those three early childhood grades that you can remember that was helpful related to STEM learning? Or what could they have done more so? Or or what did you appreciate from one to another? Well, in preschool, I was given things that were already cut out, mm-hmm. um, um, which I never really, I never really noticed. But looking back on it, like... I I wonder like what would happen if I didn't have it. Would I get this? Would I still get that treatment? Probably not. Um, in in kindergarten, I was mostly tasked with cutting straight lines. Um, I don't remember getting anything curved mm-hmm. to cut. Um, and in first grade, I remember getting everything to be able to cut. Mm-hmm. Um, Because by first grade you had mastered that ability, or because... um, In first grade, I don't think that... Like, I think everyone was given, like, the thing to cut. Mm -hmm. And it... And um, I think that my teacher would have wanted me to be accepted into the group and not being like, oh, she gets special treatment, Mm -hmm. da-da-da-da-da. I see. But it sounds like what you appreciated was the opportunity, yes. right? And the and what you didn't appreciate was feeling different. Um, do you think you would have appreciated the opportunity in preschool had they had you um, been able had they given you the paper to cut in preschool and maybe coached you through it and helped? Yes, um, I think that I would have felt more natural mm-hmm. and more um accepted into the group if I was given things to be able to cut on my own Mm -hmm. like every other kid like Mm -hmm. because whenever you're little you want to be like everyone else Mm -hmm. and the thing that kids have to struggle with as we grow is that we can't be like everyone else Mm -hmm. people tells us to be people tell us to be different and that's different for kids without without these special disabilities Mm -hmm. because they can't right (laughs) and so Whenever kids want to be diff, whenever kids want to be different, like the same, other kids want to be the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you were you already kind of felt different, and then you really just wanted to feel the same. You didn't yeah. want to feel unique, and and having thing and so having things done for you made you feel unique in a way yeah. that you didn't want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and so how did you this year, for example, in your science class uh, in eighth grade, there were quite there was quite a bit of STEM learning that took place in that class, and you had projects that you had to do. Mm-hmm. Um, one was a mousetrap catapult. Talk about how you felt about the ways that adults 
um, stepped in or helped or, or, or tried to help. Um, and, and talk about how the teachers and even me, your mom and your dad, and, and whether that was helpful, whether it wasn't, whether you would have rather it done something different, whether, what, what was your whole take on those Um, projects? I didn't really like the projects Mm because it was time consuming. (laughs) Right. And so, and so, um, I didn't really like the projects, but I did like the sense of accomplishment after, Mm -hmm. um, the teachers, they, well, the, my science teacher and my parents even would say, oh, we need to accommodate this to Mm -hmm. help you. Um, and I felt sort of, well, like, (laughs) I think I can do it. So Mm. I was never given really the chance to though. Yeah. So the, so the, the ways in which the adults in your life tried to help made you feel a bit more limited because it didn't give you the opportunity to explore and solve the problem. Yeah. Right. The, even even though your problem was a, in addition to the uh, problem of the assignment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you would have rather been given the opportunity to solve both of those pieces yeah. without adult intervention. The, ki- the kids, however, um, my in my science class mm-hmm. were really helpful mm-hmm. because um, they didn't well, kids are always really helpful whenever, like, they just think, oh, this kid has something special about them, and you and you learn to accept it. Mm-hmm. And so the kids all were really helpful. Mm-hmm. With my second project, um, my car, I was mm-hmm. having trouble winding it up, and I'm like, hey, can you wind this up for me? And and the kid did so. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Because it's... Because kids learn how to accept people as equals whenever adults see something different Mm -hmm. entirely. Okay. So um, you sound really confident and self-aware and like you're a good self-advocate. I would think that there's probably a lot of middle schoolers that find that challenging. Um, What do you think has contributed to your sense of confidence and ability to advocate for yourself? Um, Well, me realizing that people won't always be there to help me Mm -hmm. and me learning that there will be people against me that don't like me Mm -hmm. (laughs) and try to and try to stop me in what I need or want to do Mm -hmm. so I I learned whenever I know something is not right I'm I have to be loud and get angry Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and um it has a lot of benefits, and, and but a few, it, <laughs> a few drawbacks. Yeah, and and so you think that stepping out in that way has helped you become more confident to do it again. Yeah, uh-huh. and being allowed to kind of problem solve that way. Yeah, it made mm-hmm. it made me um be more accepted among my peers mm-hmm. because once you're confident. It doesn't matter what you look like or what you are. Like, mm-hmm. like you when people know they can't like knock you down mm-hmm. or anything, mm-hmm. they stop messing with you. Yeah. So, do you think that sense of confidence translates into um, into STEM learning? Right, like these projects you've had to do. Um, and do you think that that sense of confidence has probably always been a part of who you are? That given the chance would have translated into persevering as a little one in a STEM learning environment? Um, um, like stepping up for myself, uh-huh, uh-huh. um, was generating in learning that, um, you're, I'm different mm-hmm. and things are always going to be hard for the people that are different. Uh-huh. Like look at our history. <laughs> right. Um, and so, and so I had to learn how to self-advocate for myself a lot. Mm-hmm. In way in ways that people wouldn't expect, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so, and so, um, all um, all pe- kids have to learn how to self to self advocate, especially in every situation. And if you block a kid in saying, "Oh, you can't do this, you can't do that," mm-hmm. it sort of doesn't leave room for self awareness and self evaluation and everything. Okay, good. 
So what advice would you have for parents of young children with disabilities, um, for educators of young children with disabilities who, you know, like me, may think, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to not, I, you know, I don't want to have my child in a STEM learning thing, a learning activity, because I'm afraid they'll be frustrated and I don't want to have to see them frustrated and I don't want them to be frustrated. Or what would you say to teachers, early childhood teachers who are saying, okay, well, I know that this student has this uh, disability, so I'm going to, you know, modify and cut it out this way and do it for them. They might be able to do it. They didn't really ask me to do it. It's not written in any paperwork, but I think this will just make it better. I'll just go ahead. What would you say to the adults in a young child? child with disability mm. life who are kind of making these assumptions and ideas and be out of good intent right their hearts are good um what would you say to them there uh, and that might be helpful to them um well children they have a unique way of looking at the world they'll mm -hmm. either accept something because they haven't yet figured out what what it was mm -hmm. or they'll hate it and they'll just they just know and so like if you genuinely think that this child can do something or you're like oh this my my little one will, like really like this since I've seen him like looking at at the weather and they're like mm -hmm. oh my gosh daddy it's gonna be sunny mm -hmm. and then like put put the kid in like those things because uh -huh. it can help benefit people like mm -hmm. like um there are, like I've learned in science and math that I really like these subjects mm -hmm. but I have been held back mm -hmm. since I have now I have to figure out hey do you do you know how to do this and I have to look at other people's problems and say okay this goes here and this goes there and then I get this answer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so sometimes then the good intent of an adult in a child's life, a child in a, in a child's life, the good intent adds an additional limit or problem that that child then has to try to navigate. In yeah. addition to navigating the problem they already have, is that kind of? I'd I'd say let the kid come to you. If mm. if they need help, then they'll come to you. That's mm -hmm. what kids do, like. I feel like it would help them feel a lot more accepted, mm -hmm. not just among their peers, but also th the adults. Because, mm -hmm. um, well, the thing that I've learned growing up is that kids, they know when something is going on. Mm -hmm. They just don't say it. Mm. And you, and they know, hey, this isn't, this doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And it's, and once you, once they figure out, oh my gosh, it's because of my disability that people aren't accepting me or people are doing things for me even though I know I can mm -hmm. do them, it it sort of brings you down a whole notch. Mm. Like, you think you can do something, but then you're told, I don't think you can. Mm. So it, it's kind of diminishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so you'd rather... Um, struggle through an additional layer of problem solving than be diminished, if I'm understanding correctly. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Do you have any other things you'd want to tell parents or teachers um, or, or people who work with young children who have disabilities uh, regarding STEM learning? Um, try to treat them as, as like, their, as their own age. Like, mm -hmm. if you, like, kids kids like young kids even they want to be treated like the big kids mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. they feel a sense of gratitude and a sense like we're all accepted if they if you treat them like they're actually their age and you're not looking down on them mm. okay good all right well thank you thank you